Welcome back. With the holiday season behind us, the Better Business Bureau has some tips to help you remain alert, avoiding hidden fees and scams. These can range from holiday return fees to romance scams as we approach Valentine's Day. Brian Rauer, Executive Director for the Better Business Bureau, Metropolitan New York, joined me to discuss what you can do to stay safe. Brian, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, for those who aren't familiar, can you just talk about the Better Business Bureau um, and what is the overall goal of this organization? Um, we really have a mission of an ethical marketplace where buyers and sellers actually trust one another. So we do this in a lot of ways. We like to provide impartial and neutral information through things like our business profiles. Uh, we maintain tens of thousands of business profiles in just the metro New York area alone. And we'll give people a lot of information, such as a three-year complaint history. We'll tell them how businesses have responded to this information. And we're not going to tell consumers, shop here or don't shop there, but we try to give them enough information to make much more educated decisions when they're choosing a business, obviously. And uh, we hope that through providing this as a completely free service, we really are enhancing the community for both consumers and businesses. Now, one of your initiatives is targeting and recognizing scams um, or places that may have hidden fees, especially those or um, anything like around or after the holiday season. Can you expand on the challenges consumers face with the rise in these types of scams? I will tell you, in recent years, we've seen a huge influx in online scams, particularly with COVID. And once we went on lockdown in 2020, people are spending a huge amount of time online. They're banking online, they're paying their credit cards online, they're shopping online constantly. So shopping online has become a huge issue. It's led to a lot more scams. And this is exacerbated in the holiday season. Often you have hard to find products and you'll see phony websites pop up that suddenly have these products. They have them at better prices than anyone else does. In many cases, they are complete scams and you're getting nothing. Um, or you're getting a cut rate product. And the problem is, is that you can't get a refund on a product when it's a scam site, obviously. Um, the goal is often to either download malware onto your computer or to steal your identity because you're giving them your personal and financial information. If you gave them your banking information, your credit card information, this leads to many more scams, unfortunately. But even for the legit sites, obviously, um, or the more legitimate sites, there can still be a lot of problems if you don't understand their policies, if you don't understand how you can get a refund if you have a problem. Even if you've worked with this business before, policies change over time. So make sure that you know their current policy. And by the way, in New York, people seem to believe that you have an inherent right to always exchange an item or get a full refund. This is not true. Um, it, it'd be nice if it were, but it's not true. The bottom line is that unless it was misrepresented to you or it's a defective product, um, they have the right to post their own policy. But here's the problem, they don't always post those policies. So understand the policy, particularly if you're online. If you don't see a return policy, if you can't access one, this is a huge red flag to walk away. An ethical business will show you their policy, they'll tell you the hoops you have to go through, whether or not you can get a full refund, is it only store credit, um, and whether or not you can exchange the item and how long you have to do that. The problem is if you don't know the rules and you don't understand what's involved in doing that. And I'll give you an example. There could be a restocking fee. It could be as much as, say, 25% of the cost of an item. Pretty substantial. What about shipping and handling? Suddenly, you're paying for restocking and the cost to ship it back. You may not be very happy with what you get in response once you try to return a product. So if you're online, find out, can you return it to a brick and mortar? Um, and therefore, save the shipping and handling on that. Um, who pays for that anyway? Um, find out exactly what's required and exactly what the rules and regulations are so you can follow those. By the way, do you need to hold on to your packaging? In many cases, they won't accept a return without packaging. Um, and, uh, if you do, and if you do have packaging, obviously, are they still charging you again to ship it and handle it back to them? So make sure you understand the rules and regulations before you pay that price. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that, I think, because this is something that pretty much everybody has probably ran into at some point, um, expecting that they can get a return or exchange, and they say, no, only store credit. And I know so many people have been upset with that, um, and this is just uh, something that happens often, especially, I'm assuming, after the holiday season. Can you talk about maybe gift exchanges? I know that, uh, like, sometimes if somebody gives you a gift, there's, like, a receipt, and you can return it. Um, does this apply to that as well? I mean, hold on to your gift receipt and ask your friends and family if they're giving you that, can I please have a copy of that gift receipt? In many cases, store policies require you to have a receipt, proof of purchase. And if you don't have that, you're out of luck. Um, in many cases, they want to, if you go into the brick and mortar store, they want to see ID. So if you're not the purchaser, 
you may have to ask your friend or family member who gave you the gift if they wouldn't mind accompanying you or doing the return on their own. I know that's awkward. <laughs> um, I understand that. But the fact is, if you want to return, in some cases, that's required. So again, before anyone makes that purchase, understand the store's rules and regulations. And they're supposed to tell you beforehand. And I will tell you this. If the only time you find out that there are no refunds is after you've made the purchase, that's a hugely unethical business practice. You're not permitted to do that. You have to know you can't return a product before you make the purchase, not after the fact. So make sure you understand before you make the purchase or before your friends and family make the purchase. Encourage them to find out the rules. Now, what can, or well, as the new year begins, I want to say that many people actually feel inspired to start their health and weight loss journey. Um, I, we know that this is like a really big thing for so many people. What are the scams or um, maybe some gray areas that are associated um, as we kind of head into that new year, like where people are kind of wanting to change uh, their health and eating habits? I will tell you, um, we have seen a huge influx in reported scams in this area just over the past year um, with BBB. Uh, and I will tell you, um, one of the biggest issues we see are something I will call subscription traps. You are signing up for a free, free in quotes, um, trial period. And in many cases, free is absolutely not free. You think you're making a one-time purchase or it's a, just a trial period and then it ends. But in many cases, it converts to a subscription, a monthly subscription. And how do you find out? Well, you check your credit card months later, so you've been charged each month for something else. So you thought you were spending 50 bucks on a product or service or nothing, and it turns out you've just spent hundreds of dollars over the course of several months until you unwittingly discover it. Um, the problem is that often this is buried in the fine print, or mice type as I call it, where you don't really see it, or, it could, or if it's online, it could be two or three screens away, and you never click through to find out this information. So before you accept the free subscription, Make sure you understand all the rules and all the regulations involved in that. Is it an opt-out? Do I have to cancel it myself? Is it going to continue? Or does it just stop after, say, two weeks when they said it would? And if you're making a one-time purchase, make sure that it is truly a one-time purchase. Read the fine print. What exactly are you agreeing to do? That's a big problem. Now, during this time, I want to mention that we see many independent businesses or entrepreneurs offer classes, regimens. What are some red flags that people should overall pretty much look for um, when they are going to maybe go into some of these classes or, you know, buy, you know, someone's cookbook online? What are some red flags they should look for? And by the way, there are some, some true scams where they're completely phony sites, whether it's not a real product or service. Um, they're out to get your information, your banking information, your credit card information, your per se identifiable information, and they're using that for the purposes of identity theft. So right off the bat, there are some that are complete scams, so you're not getting anything. And then good luck ever getting a refund, you can't find them at that point. But for the ones that are just sketchier and it's an actual existing site, um, some of the big problems you have are tremendously over-promising and under-delivering. You're basically seeing them guarantee your permanent weight loss. By definition, that's misleading. There's no such thing as guaranteeing permanent weight loss or they'll promise you a miracle product, a pure, a protein powder, whatever it is, you know, some kind of powder um, that is going to, you take it once a day and you don't have to exercise and you don't have to uh, diet, you don't have to do anything basically and you automatically lose weight. Um, again, that's by definition misleading. If you don't have to do anything and you automatically lose weight, this is a problem. So they overpromise, and after several months you find out that not much is actually happening. And they'll couple this with um, wonderful before and after pictures of people who probably never actually use the product. And this is how they trap you. So whenever you see overly glowing testimonials and products that make these wild claims and guarantees and promises to do something without any effort, any time, um, and any diet and any exercise, those are huge red flags that these are not legitimate products. And by the way, the other concern you should have is if there is a product that is not listed, which may actually interact with prescription medication you're on or may actually have dangerous side effects. You don't actually know what you're dealing with in some cases. And in some cases, you have products where the FDA has actually recalled them, and they found out that they're actually dangerous to your health. So be very wary about a product that's really untested and unproven. It may actually be deleterious to your health. Now, I want to talk about um, another holiday that is coming up, which is Valentine's Day. Um, we see a lot of romance scams happen during this time, but they can actually happen all year round. Can you tell me a little bit more about romance scams? Yeah, um, those are particularly problematic. Um, and I will tell you this, in recent years, we've also seen an influx of romance scams. Those have actually increased. And they're one of the highest ticket items in terms of dollar loss for consumers, for scam victims, unfortunately. 
and they tend to come out of the woodwork, um, you know, around Valentine's Day, but they happen all year round. And I think over the last several years, that's become a main way that people are meeting one another. Um, they'll often post something on one of the dating sites or one of the social apps, and it will be a too good to be true profile. Um, they'll pick an incredibly attractive picture, and they will be very successful financially, you know, all the things to get you to become interested in that case. And then they're kind of grooming their their victims. Um, they'll get to know them very quickly. They'll try to build trust very quickly. Um, they'll perhaps buy them little gift, you know, little gifts, flowers, or things that are fairly nominal, but to show them that they care. They'll build up a trusting relationship unusually quickly, to the point where they're telling them they love them in a very short period of time to gain their trust. Uh, one of the things they also do is try to separate you out from friends and family. Um, tell you if they're criticizing them, then they're simply trying to break us up anything they can do to keep you from checking them out. What I would say is that anytime they try and immediately get you off the app quickly, the dating app quickly, um, whether it's through uh, texting you or phone calls, they don't want to be discovered on the app and have them be kind of outed on the app, so they'll try and take you offline. And at that point, when they build up that trust, they'll kind of test you out. They'll try and find out whether or not you will pay for something small to see if you'll actually support them. And then they go in for the for the big for the big hit and that's where they claim that they're having a huge family problem um, they can't meet you in person by the way they can claim they're in the military they're stationed overseas there's always an excuse not to meet you in person and at that point there will be a problem they need surgery um, they had a car accident they can't pay their bills or they really want to meet you in person can you go ahead and wire me the money so we'll buy a ticket and I can come see you right. and again this is all a scam they're just trying to get you to trust them and to pay you pay this over and I will tell you, if anyone ever tells you they want you to wire money or use a prepaid debit card, you've never met them before, do not do this. It is a <laughs> huge away. red flag. <laughs> Run away as right. fast as you can. This is a complete scam. As a general rule, whatever they do that, that is their preferred method of payment, by the way, because you'll basically never get your money back at that point. Right. They don't want a credit card because you can challenge a credit card. Right. Uh, they want to make sure that they're in a situation where once they get you once, they can go back and get you again. And what's really insidious is that there have been times once they've been discovered, they will then come back to you and pose as law enforcement oh, wow. and claim they've actually caught the person who's done this to you. And for several thousand dollars, well, they can help you get your money back. So the scam continues and the circle continues on and on. It's very insidious. And many people don't report this because they are so humiliated, and they shouldn't be, but so humiliated that they don't want anyone else to know about this. So it goes unreported. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us and kind of, you know, educating and, you know, letting people know to be alert uh, about the scams, you know, fees that are happening right during these times. So thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you so much. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you, the viewers, for tuning in. If you miss any part of today's show, you can catch the Recable cast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Optimum Channel 67 and Verizon Files Channel 33 or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. You can catch a brand new episode of Open with Darren Heine on Wednesday and with Rena Valentine on Friday. I'm Kim and Aline, wishing you and yours safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.